Good morning, everybody. All right, I'm at the pilot in Hesperia. Just uh, just got here from the house not too long ago to get reefer fuel. Uh, I'm gonna go make a delivery uh, this morning in Ontario at a place called Coastal Pacific. Um, my first time going to this place, uh, from what I've read. Now uh, it's on uh, it's on Mission Boulevard. Uh, right on the southwest end of the Ontario Airport, basically. Um, from what I've read, during the weekdays, you check in on the Acacia Avenue side, on the south side of the, the facility, and you're supposed to park on the street, and then walk up to the guard shack. And I guess on the weekends, you're supposed to check in on the north side, the, the Mission Boulevard side. Mission Avenue, uh, whatever. I think it's Mission Boulevard. Um, but that's the same street. Mission is the same street that goes down toward where the Walmart DC is and Mita Loma that we go to. And, you know, it goes generally down toward where the Costco DC also is not on the same street but it's nearby all right um i also have a pickup immediately afterward uh, pickup time actually is the same time as my delivery time uh you need help covering the load though and it's probably i'll probably be waiting for it anyway and that'll be a pickup at the walmart dc in colton and anyway, that one is going to uh, Temple, Texas. So will be down on I-40, uh, down on I-10, I mean, on the next route. Alright, I don't know if I want to sit behind Old Dominion, but... Uh, he's sticking to on the accelerator. Alright, I'm going to get my line off here. going the same direction. He's going northbound. Okay. So we have about an hour or so trip down. I don't know if I need to park on the street there on Mission or if I just waltz right in on the weekend. I, I, I'm a little reluctant to go into the lot because uh, what I've read on the Google reviews, a lot of people said they went in and got told to back back out and they won't let them uh, go through and turn around or anything. And that's all it's so You might have to blindside back out onto the street and uh, you know, deal with traffic coming at you on top of it. So it seems to me the safer option would be to just go right, you know, just park on the street and then walk up double check, I mean, check in uh, by foot, whatever, and then uh, wait for them to call you or something. Uh, I guess they do have an alleyway uh, in between their two buildings that you can park overnight in. Uh, I guess that's where the employees park and there's an expectation that you move out of those out of that area when the people start showing up to work in the morning or something along that line from what I gathered uh, got mixed uh, saw mixed reviews about the attitudes of the people working there like the let's say the guards and all that uh, I guess they can be pretty rude but other people said that they had good experiences there with the uh, customer service, so... I don't know, maybe it's... I get it with the guards, they, you know, they get, they're so used to dealing with people not knowing the rules and it gets frustrating for them. Having to constantly uh, explain to people that uh, this is how it works and... You know, and they're probably getting attitude from drivers a lot of times as well. But at the same time, they're, they're supposed to be representing their company, and now it's probably Allied Security or some other third-party security agency handling the guard, the guard shack loss prevent.
engine, whatever you want to call it. So they, they don't, you know, the guards are usually never directly employed. Okay, so guards are usually never directly employed by the uh, by the company and by the warehouse who uh, who they're working for. It's, Usually employed by like Allied Security or one of the other security companies that has contracted to handle loss prevention for their facility. So it can be a real pain when, let's say you have a, a guard who's rude or a pain in the ass or whatever. Or, um, you can't really blame the, the customer for that. Now that's all on the security agency and the best thing you can do there is if you have a problem with a, a guard, point it out to the, the security company, not to the security company, but uh, either point it out to the customer and let them know, hey, the guard here uh, was uh, this or that, whatever, or also just set, put it on your Qualcomm or whatever your DLD system is and let your, let your customer service people, your dispatch basically know that you had a bad experience with this or that person and then don't don't try to engage with them and get yourself uh, DNR as we call it do not return by the customer for you know, being unprofessional even if they need if you know the person deserves it just remember you're representing whatever company's name is on the side of your truck it in your better interest uh, to represent them well, whether it's your own company or somebody else's company. Uh, about ready to head down the Golden Pass. Um, I have a light load. Uh, I can't remember the exact amount of it. I, think, I don't even think it was 20,000 pounds, if I recall. So, yeah, it'll be easy to get down this hill. The only problem is to have that stupid 45 mile an hour truck limit. Meanwhile, I got a Sierra England going to Walmart saying, I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to do 55 through here.
I'm soccer. I don't know if that's a, like a German word for attack or what. It's it's A H A C T H C and then a backward N and then a backward R. I don't know German, so but I know Ameri I know English is a Germanic language, so coming up with different ways that I could possibly pronounce that. I would have to guess that it has something to do with attack or whatever. That's on their new album just came out this week. Now, if you're not familiar with Scooter, it's a it's a German EDM, uh, you know, basically a hard, hard trance, hardcore, whatever, hard house. Uh, duo, a couple of guys, and then a lot of the songs, the the wife of one of the guys uh, sings, and then they, uh, they, they use like some auto tune or reverb thing, whatever, to make her sound like a chipmunk sometimes. <laughs> kind of weird, I, I guess, in a way, but... In other ways, it's also catchy. At least to me it is. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but... You guys know I do like EDM, and it is the most... Uh, video-friendly, I guess I would say, genre of music I know of. At least, I, yeah, it's, it's the kind of music I can, I can have on my videos and be least likely to... Uh, have to worry about getting my video blocked, which does happen. All right, 215, 15 interchange here. Taking the 15 side, and we down to taking it down to I-10 West. Getting off at the Vineyard, uh, actually the Fourth Avenue exit, um, uh, which I know very well because my. Uh, my kids and great grandma lives right off that same exit. Uh, but I'll be on the other side of the freeway from where their grandma lives. Basically, get off there at 4th, go across the other side of the interstate, and then south on Grove, and then uh, east on Mission, which is a short distance past the interstate, or not too far past. Again, uh, my speed a little bit settled here. I'll put on another one of their new songs. So, if you guys are into any kind of EDM music, you know, at least I'll expose you guys to some of it. Uh, the album is called God Save the Rave. I've heard, I actually listened to the whole album yesterday while I was driving, and I don't know, as a whole, I actually liked it overall. Uh, not very many songs on there that I would not want to hear again. Or I you know, don't really care to hear, whatever. Whatever the case might be. A good amount of the stuff I'm going to end up integrating into my, uh, my EDM library. Okay, so next one I'm going to do uh, is a song called Rave Teacher, Somebody Like Me. Things that I say and things that I do I'll keep quiet now I've found you We can go home, maybe we can just be All I need is somebody like me
Switchers wins! Yes!
Flight 10 West ramp might be closed right now because it is between 10 a.m. and 5 a.m. Oh, let's see. I don't see anything saying that it's closed right now, but it's kind of expected that it might be. Boulevard. So it's not that long a trip from there. You know, if I, if I had to go down to Harupa and then go across over to Mission, that it's not a big deal. Alright, I 10 westbound from 15 now. Well, construction going on here. Looks like they are going to add a lane or something there coming off the, the interchange. Yeah, this needs to be overhauled pretty bad because it's very common for trucks to have a difficult time getting to the, the Millican off ramp there so they get over to the TA or Petro. Unless you're coming off the, which one? I think it's the northbound 15 to westbound 10. Uh, unless you're coming off that connector, it's really, it, with the traffic conditions, a lot of times it can be very difficult to get over there before you're, you know, before you pass your exit. That's even if you're already on I-10 and already in the rightmost lane. Still have to go across like two different lanes of, uh, of uh, transition road traffic to get over to it. All right, Haven Avenue exit coming up here. Now my appointment time this morning is 4 a.m. Um, when I gather, uh, it seems like you can check in about an hour early. But on the weekends, uh, I get the impression they don't start uh, letting drivers in until about 3.30 and then they start proceeding at 4 or something along that line. I, yeah, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but based on Google reviews, what I was the best, best able to figure out is uh, that seems to be the case. Archibald Avenue coming up next. This is the one where it'll take you right into the terminals there at Ontario Airport. A few more miles will be off the road. They're off the highway. And actually, it's right after Vineyard Avenue, which is next. down here closer to like 3.30 or so, but I'm already only a, a mile away from my exit, and uh, I don't know, I think that exit only sign is for the lane that got torn up, but it could be wrong. Just in case, I'm going to come over here, and I think it looks like I can get past
Fourth Street exit coming up. It's my, it's my, it's my exit here, a quarter mile away. Yeah, I'll be turning left on uh, westbound Fourth Avenue, Fourth Street first, and then I'll turn south on the Grove, and then, uh, then kind of southeast on Mission, and the customer will be on the right side. I tend to hate trying to get on the get on the eastbound 10 from here though uh, when I'm in my car because uh, it's, a, it's an unprotected green uh, green light, basically a circular green, and you have to wait for traffic going the other way. And I don't know why; it just seems like it's always a pain in the butt. Also, what I read is uh, there's no parking on the uh, allowed on the street or something, but there are times you have to park on the street to check in. So usually cities have exceptions for trucks that are uh, in the process of picking up or delivering a load, like you're trying to get checked in or whatever. And it helps to know what each city's actual ordinances are because I remember I had a, a friend um, checked in at a customer in Rancho Cucamonga, which is uh, very, very close to here. And they were waiting on the, you know, they're parked on the street waiting for a dock door. They were already checked in, just waiting on the customer to call them or with a dock door assignment. And I guess some. Uh, uh, a sheriff deputy or local PD officer, whatever it was, came up and told them they had to move. And I so I looked up the ordinances for Rancho Cucamonga and turned out there's an exception in there specifically for trucks that are uh, in the process of doing pickups and deliveries, which is what he was doing. So I pointed it out to him and said, "Next time they give you shit over there, uh, show them this. Tell them you don't, you, know, you don't have to move." All right, this is Grove coming up here. This light. Not really supposed to come into the turn lane until that little break right there, but when I, because I have that 53 foot trailer following me around and it doesn't like to come into the lane as uh, readily, uh, I'll, I tend to move in a little bit sooner with the truck. Now, a lot of people don't know that, that's the rule. Uh, I found that out after I went to traffic violator school many, many moons ago. Uh, I remember the instructor of the class uh, told, uh, taught us that. a little bit down, uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe a mile or so, and it'll be a left turn on to Mission. This almost seems like it might be a, like it should be a truck restricted area right here because the residential areas, but
but I, I we line up. I said I didn't think there was a. I think it'd be better to take a different route in here. This has a residential area. Alright, is this whole coming up or which cross street? I know it's one of the major cross streets. I don't remember if it's whole or. Yeah, it looks like it's whole. Alright, truck route any direction from here. So it's always a good thing to see. Got a bridge up ahead, but no signs telling, you know, saying anything about it being low clearance, not to mention it wouldn't be a truck route if it was. say something about parking on the alley here. Is there a way? Oh, okay. There, let's go in from the other side. Looks like there is a driveway on the other side that I can use. To, I was wondering how they were facing that direction because there's not enough room to turn around. So It made sense that there had to have been a had been another driveway on the other side or something. I know there's a driveway into the uh, the dock area. All right, south on Baker. Then we'll head east east on Acacia and then park there in that alley area and. Then should be a case right here. Uh, and I think this driveway coming right up will be the the alley that I was just looking at. Yeah, this is it. Uh, 
Now, as mentioned, uh, the Google reviews, as I said earlier, it shows, uh, Need to park right over here, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? I can I come up further and park on the opposite side. There are parking stalls over there. It looks like it's set up for cars to park there, but. mentioning the Google review suggests during the weekdays you, you check in over on the south side off the Acacia side and on the week weekends I guess you check in on the other side there's another JCT parked right there all right so good to know I'm not the only one here all right, so it's only 3.20. They, uh, I don't think they start even letting people check in for another at least 10 minutes, so I'll probably wait till then. And then, you know, appointment time is at 4 o'clock, so um, stay tuned. We'll have some more footage for you guys for the docking, all right? All right, guys, uh, talked to another, the other JCT driver a few minutes ago. He says they, uh, they don't want us to even check in until 4 o'clock. Yeah, there were three trucks here. One of them already pulled forward, and then now the other two were or, or went, went over into the lot. And the other two pulled forward, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward and get in line behind them. And he did confirm we do need to check in over here on the north side. He said just drive your truck right up. Yeah, we don't have to uh, uh, walk our paperwork up to a guard shack on the weekend at least. My tandem's a little bit closer because they're kind of out in the middle of the lane. Just follow these guys in whenever they decide to uh, go into the lot. I'll do the same. Still got about 10 minutes to go though before we can check in, it appears. So, um, yeah, I'll just check back in a few. Alright, they're starting to pull forward again, so I'm going to follow suit. Got another car coming up the lane here. Looks like another truck facing the opposite direction over here. Uh, yeah, that other JCT driver, uh, his name's Robert, and looks like he's been here about 10 years. Okay, that's Hirschbach. Yeah, I saw Hirschbach pass by me uh, going, the, going the other way when I was sitting across the lane from here. Okay, looks like we're going in one at a time here, so... Spot back there behind me, or someone else, I can't tell. Now, 
double check that there will be a room for me to to get all the way into there without blocking any of these driveways first and then we'll proceed. Looks like I, look like I might be able to pull forward. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, there's another truck there. I can't, uh, I can't go in there without blocking driveways. Yeah, the other guy's checking in right now, though. I don't want to park and block driveways. here and he's not figuring out that I I can't pull forward without blocking the driveway somewhere I'm already partially blocking this one now because I couldn't see the back end of the guy without pulling a little bit more forward but uh, yeah the truck that's in front of me he's uh, I can still see him parked up there and I still see he's got his brake lights on got his brakes out. He looks like he took his foot off the brake pedal now. See, I got this driveway right here that I'm already partially blocking. And then the, the entrance to their side, uh, you know, if someone else wants to come out that same driveway, I got to go in. And then there's another driveway to a, a car parking lot right there uh, as soon as I get through making the turn. Uh, and there's not enough room for me to to, to put my truck anywhere without blocking something so that's why I decided I'm, I'm gonna just stay here when the other guy gets when the other guy gets checked in and out of the way I'll go ahead and pull forward I guess they don't do as much on the weekends here as they do on the weekdays, which shouldn't surprise me because it's generally, I don't know, it's a common practice, I guess, with a lot of a lot of businesses. And it's just, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really used to it, though, because a lot of the places I go to, uh, like let's say Walmart DCs, they're open tw um, seven days a week, and they don't necessarily slow down at all. Double check though because it seems to be sitting there a while, so I'm kind of wondering what's no, now. He starts to pull forward as soon as I set my brakes. <laughs> Imagine that.
first box on a follow me in anyway. Who gives who gives a crap if he can uh, get in without blocking somebody? Track right in front of us. Pull up to them first. Can't tell if anybody's in there. My understanding though is yeah, at this location you only deal with the guard shack and then also with the lumpers. There is a person in there. Uh, okay, this lady is a little bit frustrating to deal with. Um, Alright, door four. Okay, she says just back right into door four, but I'm like, okay, do I need my doors open or closed? And then can I break my seal or what? And she says just back right into the door or whatever, and then, uh, and then the lumper will come out and get my paperwork and all that. I'm like, well, I, it's like it's kind of important information to know because if I if I'm not allowed to break my seal, I need to know that because if I break my seal and back right into the door. Uh, so I see the doors are open on all these trailers. See, theirs are, they open theirs up. Yeah, I was trying to get the woman to explain to me more clearly. Do I can I open? Do I, can I break my seal and open my doors, or do I need to just back in, leave my seal on, and all that, and, uh, whatever? And, and I couldn't get a clear answer out of her. She would not give me one. It was just simply back into the door. I'm like, okay, but you're not telling me if uh, if I need if the door is open. I've never been here before. I don't know if the fucking doors open from the, if they open the doors from inside the dock or if I need to open them first or whatever. Uh, like you can't just give me a simple answer and a simple question. Can I break my seal? Or do I, or do I need to, do I just park in front of the door? Because those are two different meanings to me. This guy done. Yeah, it looked like he was ro uh, ricocheting off the door, and that's... Alright, door four is way down here on the other end by the other JCT truck. I'm wondering what's going on here. He Wait, maybe there's a drop trailer and there's a signed door or yeah, there's not much for room here. Let's double check where Just waiting on the guy, the other, the other guy there to, to dock in or something. Morning. Morning. How you doing? Then, uh, you go back up into door 21. 21? Yeah, we don't have. There's only two doors there, and that's for them. Go to 21. Okay. Come here and turn your paperwork. 
Okay, the woman at the guard shack, was, uh, I guess she wanted me to let her know if I moved doors, and also it wasn't quite clear to me. Do I break my seal or do I wait for no. you guys? Break your seal and back up. Don't worry about her until you get out. She don't know what goes on over here. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was like, you know, it's like, because she I probably see... go, She's probably told you to go to door one and ten. Yeah, she said to go to door four, but I couldn't get an answer out of her whether to break my seal and open the doors or leave them shut or what. Yeah, she don't, she don't know. It, just break the seal back up. We'll take care of you. You only have to see her on your way out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, when you back up, come back and bring your paperwork here. Over where you just came out of? Or? Uh, not to me. I I'll take care of your paperwork. I got to give you a lumber price and everything. Yeah. Okay. All right, I appreciate it. Backing up the door 21 instead. A lot of work, it's easier. This, uh, you see that woman there, it didn't, doesn't seem like she really knows what she's doing. Like, she just doesn't really give a crap about it, just anything more than just getting people checked in and all that really, all that she really cares about or needs to know, whatever. But it's, like I said, it's certain little details are important for me to know because I could run into a problem here. This guy was uh, a lot easier to deal with though. Alright, right here is door 21. Let me get my doors open and my lock removed and here and then butt up against that those uh, those barriers for the fire uh, fire hydrant I can tell either Hirsch boss is not a very experienced driver or he's just being forgetful. Turn your headlights off when you're facing the driver who's trying to back up.
Okay, so uh, let's watch this drama unfold here. Okay, so what's going on here is uh, Hearstbox trying to dock in, and I guess Stevens won't move out of the way. He can move, uh, he can move forward and get out of the way, but he won't. And Hearstbox trying to set up for his backing, and he won't move. And You have 8 hours and 0 minutes of remaining drive time. So now is he going to be in the way of the yard jockey also or? I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to let the woman know also oh. let the guard shot know that uh, I got moved over to door 21 so stand by for that uh, I'll end this video probably over at the truck wash uh, little sisters speaking of I also do my back row for the trailer wash out when I'm done Okay, 
right guys we're all done here finally it's uh, just after 7 a.m. so about three hours total here about normal I guess I would say for most deliveries uh, look like all the other drivers except for that Stevens truck over there is uh, are all done already uh, all right so I'm gonna get my wheel chalk out of the way and then as soon as my lights green I can uh, leave Okay, I also got to wait on my, oh, my Qualcomm now, just now fired up to, uh, the, it got onto the screen. Alright, I'm going to double check, make sure the trailer really is empty. It should be, there's nothing notated on the BOL that there were any OS and Ds. But, standard procedure, I was double check. Verified, trailer's empty, even got a pleasant surprise there. Uh, two load locks in there that I didn't even know were in there. I mean, even when I was looking in the inspection door to double check the uh, that the load is in good shape when I do my reefer checks, uh, didn't know there was a tr uh, there was one in there. Oops, uh, you have eight hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Uh, there were or that there were load locks, whatever, because uh, I could tell there weren't any on the back uh, on the last pallet. So it was a pleasant surprise because I was all out of load locks and I need more. I thought I was going to have to go buy a couple uh, from the truck stop actually on my way to the next shipper. All right, empty call. No OS and D. Yes, I'm empty. Yes, BOL is clear. No, it did not drop trailer. We got about five eighths on fuel. Now my last refuel was in Winslow, Arizona. So come into Cali. I have plenty to get back out of Cali with. I don't have to worry about uh, buying California fuel, even though I live here and do you know, spend you know, do a lot of loads into here. Okay, now we'll get up to the guard shack. And we'll head over to the other side of I-15 to get my trailer washed out. And that's where I'll end the video. And I'll get the 
We've got another video started for the pickup in uh, Colton. You guys are all, all pretty well familiar with that one. I'm there quite a bit. <coughs> JCT uh, does dozens of pickups there. Actually, do pickups and deliveries there. Uh, rumor had it, I, I don't know if it's the case, but I had heard that there's like about 90 or so loads we do a day out of that place. I mean, you, you can't go there without having, uh, without seeing usually at least half a dozen of us you know, hanging around there. There for now. I don't know where. Oh. Okay. Yeah, she said she doesn't have to check in there. I didn't even know she was around still because I, I could tell she wasn't in her booth. There we go. Now we're clear of that curb. back over to Grove and work way back up to I-15, uh, I-10 I mean. Cross over to the other side of I-15 and get off at Valley which is the very first exit. There's this Amerijet and Aloha Air Cargo. Okay, I'll just say it's oh. I guess it's one way, so. Okay, I guess we won't get on it, bro. Let's get on at, uh, probably at Millican or something. Gonna go basically go around to the other side of the airfield, or that, or I have to take Baker down. Not really point, uh, point going down the, the next street. But I know I can take Mission down to, uh, uh, I would imagine Milliken. So I mean, it's got to get past the airfield. That runs all the way over to, uh, which street is that? I forget. No mission goes all the way down to even I-15, so no problem being on this road. Over Needlecraft. Y and D River. Alright, so yeah, recapping this. I uh, just finished delivering at Coastal Pacific in Ontario, California. Yeah, I had a little bit of drama there with uh, the Hirschbach driver trying to set up for his backing and uh, Stevens driver being in his way and not wanting to move. Uh, apparently the Stevens driver was a rookie who uh, had a trainer on the truck with him. Well, where was the trainer and why weren't they uh, involved in that? I don't know. Alright, this is Archibald right here. That's, uh, that goes right across the middle of the airfield. So I know I can't go that way. It's Archibald's the same street where the, the terminals are at. Yeah, Hirschbach was pretty mad. Uh, he was even challenging the other guy to a fight. Probably not the right, uh, smartest thing to be doing. I get his, uh, his, his frustration, but if you get to the point you want to fight somebody, you know, might want to take a look at your anger management skills and your maturity level. Not to say I don't want to, I don't get tempted to want to beat the crap out of somebody myself, but 
the, there's a difference between having thoughts on uh, I'd like to do this versus uh, what I will do. Uh, even next signal. I think I'm trying. I think you yeah, actually. I think you actually can take Haven. I think that yeah. I think that goes right next to the. I want to say it goes right next to the end of the runway. Because I know it's, I know Milliken's past it. So, yeah, we'll try Haven. I've, I'm pretty, yeah, and I've been on Haven before. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And I know Haven does intersect with I-10, so that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking about this route here. Because I knew there was, a, I thought it was an H Street. I just couldn't remember if it was Haven or something else. Um, I know it wasn't Holt. Uh, for some reason, I wasn't thinking Haven, but I, I swore it was an 8th Street. So this person, uh, there's this uh, black Toyota has their rear door open. Oh, okay, they have some kind of, uh, had some kind of furniture, stuff, like a shelf or whatever the hell it was in the back seat, and it was too wide to fit. Uh, this light just doesn't want to be nice. Look like it's time to not pressure activate it. turning yellow. So we'll be getting a green arrow in a second here. There we go. Right, no red light runners on the left. No red light runners on the right. Soul in sight, you're gonna turn red on me just to mess with me, right? Alright, FedEx facility over there, Echo Airport Center. Yeah, I can see a UPS aircraft over there up ahead and to the left, so yeah, and I can see the end of the airfield straight up ahead, just on the other side of that next light. Okay, these lights don't understand that I use I need to use the restroom and I'm getting really pissed at this. So there's absolutely no reason for this light to be turning red at, at, at all. Nobody even here. with that light there because it's already turning red again and, and Haven's the more major road it should not be uh, playing second fiddle to a small street like that uh, like a target distribution center or something right here uh, Harupa Avenue I can also take Harupa over to I-15 but I think it'll be a shorter distance to go up to 10, but uh, yeah, the way these lights are working here, I don't know, I might, I, it does half tempt me to just go across over to 15 instead. Uh, here's the 
salmon wall here for the for the UPS aircraft old park. And have a regular flip. This is a blast yeah, blast wall there basically. Sometimes mechanics have to do uh, engine, maintenance, engine maintenance runs. Not to mention the airplanes have to get start their engines there as well. See, uh, Southwest Airlines aircraft taxiing out. across the other side of I-15 I as well. Then they eventually end up on uh, Slover, which is uh, the south uh, the south parallel road, or the, the south side of the I-10 parallel road. California Commerce Center. Road is the, uh, the street that TA and Petrol were on, but on a different section of it. And no, you can't get to it from here. Yeah, that's a that's a dead end section there. These lights are just nothing but a pain in the ass. This is the kind of stuff that infuriates me when every damn light possible. Yeah, it, it, spin, it turns red and spins that like the maximum amount of time possible red. Oh, I hate that. I can tolerate like one or two lights or something, but there's just no reason for that. All right, finally eastbound ten. Suddenly that southbound Baker over to uh, whatever the next road was going to be down there. Head back across the Grove. Almost seems like it would, it would have been a better idea.
Brother Wilbur, left lane. Reefer tank is already mostly full. And we'll turn that down so I don't have to listen to that local area base station guy. the shoulder coming the other direction or in that general area is where my turn is going to be banana avenue yeah right behind right on the other side of that truck is where I'll be turning just like when trucks park there though because it's hard as hell to see uh, around them when you're coming out of the wa truck wash part uh, truck wash lot and you can't tell if anybody's coming doesn't look very busy here today which is good well all that never mind I digress but these guys are here for wash, uh, for regular washes. These guys, you know, Bob Tell and a dry van, they are, they're gonna be, they're not gonna be using the washout lane. right in. Perfect. Good. Still got to fill out my EFS check. That's going to end, uh, end this particular video. Uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the, what everything happened. And we'll see you guys next time on my next pickup with Colton. Alright, see you guys.